Just a decade ago, for every 10 people on the planet, there was approximately one device that was connected to the internet. Today, for those same 10 people, there are over 20 internet-connected devices. And the number of connected devices will double in the next few years. Now, when I say connected or smart devices, I don't just mean computers, tablets, and smartphones. The category of smart connected devices already includes some types of televisions, cars, thermostats, fitness trackers, even some refrigerators and coffee makers. One day, practically everything we own or touch will be connected. This phenomenon is called the Internet of Things, and it's still in its infancy. A rapidly growing segment of the Internet of Things are connected medical devices, smart glucometers, heart rate monitors, asthma inhalers, blood pressure cuffs, insulin pens, thermometers, and pill bottles are already being given to patients for treatment. As these tools become more common, imagine a day when we can track everything that's going on inside of our body. And we can share this data with our doctors. Or even use tools to analyze it ourselves. Connected medical devices have the potential to revolutionize healthcare, but they will only do so if patients actually use these tools. And this really big if is what I'd like to discuss today. Because as the wave of connected medical devices approaches, it's inevitable that these tools will be given to some patients who never asked for them in the first place. Or to put it another way, these amazing technologies will be given to patients who will not put forth the effort to set these devices up, to use them, or to properly maintain them. Now, this is a really huge issue for the adoption of smart med devices. And it can't be ignored. But it can be overcome with really great design. Here's how. If we first acknowledge that most patients will not put forth additional effort to use these tools, we can then design these tools to fit into the lives of patients so seamlessly that no additional effort will be required by patients to use them. Let me show you what I mean. When my team and I were creating our smart pill bottles, we devised three guiding design principles for creating smart med devices that patients will actually use. Number one, the device should connect and work the moment the patient receives it. No assembly, no downloads, and no forcing the patient to sync the device to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or a third-party hub. We literally mean zero setup. A solution that works really well for us is to put a cellular chip inside of the bottle so that it automatically connects and works anywhere it goes. Second, the smart connected device should be designed to be used by the patient in the exact same way as the regular non-connected version of that device. This way it's simple and intuitive. What easier way to get patients to use a smart pill bottle than to have it used exactly like a regular pill bottle. And third, the device should last for as long as possible without needing to be recharged. Because most people will not remember to charge these devices. The goal should be multiple months or longer on a single charge. And when the device needs to be recharged, it should reach out to the patient. Connected medical technology is wonderful, and it will improve the lives of millions. Now, of course, there are still issues that need to be worked out, like privacy, financial implications, and freedom of choice. But my message here today is clear. Smart medical devices can't just be smart about the technology. They must be smart about the people using the technology. Because it's people, patients, 
ordinary men and women who will ultimately decide how the internet of medical things succeeds. Thank you.